a Masters of Pharmacy program, My Dispense tutorial. Uh, the My Dispense program is a virtual pharmacy which we will be using right through your degree uh, to simulate dispensing, counseling, and working in the tutorials. So when you log on, you can head to the URL up here, otherwise the link will be provided on LMS. And you can log in just with your standard UWA uh, single sign-on theme password and student number. Okay, so once you're logged in, uh, it will show you this screen here, which is your units that you're enrolled in. If you don't have any access to anything like this at this stage, you need to let your tutor know and we can organize that for you. Uh, to access any of the tutorials, you need to click on this button just over here, which is view tutorials. So today we've got one tutorial set up and it is the My Dispense uh, pharmacy tutorial. So we click on this little button and it'll take us into the pharmacy. So there'll be some information and instructions on the opening screen, which will show you, which will direct you onto how to further proceed in the assess, in the tutorial or assessment. Uh, for assessment versions, there is a password which you do have to enter, which will be given to you on the day of the assessment. So we just click OK. Welcome to the UWA My Dispense Pharmacy. Uh, as you can see, it is a virtual pharmacy and does have a lot of things that a normal pharmacy would have. When you enter, a patient will be standing in front of you. Now, they will be of the correct age, correct weight, correct gender, correct ethnicity uh, of the patient in the scenario, and your tutor will become and embody this patient. So by clicking on the patient, you can actually bring up the fact-finding exercise. For our purposes, we don't actually use this function because you're going to be doing all of your patient information gathering with your tutor. Just in front of the patient, there is a prescription. You can click on this. It will bring up all of the information of the prescription which will be important for your tutorial today. As you can see, just like any other normal prescription, it has the doctor's information then it has the prescriber number, which is a unique identifying number. It has the patient's Medicare details. It has if they have a concession card. It has the patient's details here. It also has uh, the medication details and the doctor's signature. Um, so you need to be making sure as well, sometimes some of these details may have been omitted by the doctor. You still need to do your legal uh, prescription check before proceeding into the dispensing process. So in your tutorials, what you'll do is you can have a look at the prescription and then you will do a role play with your tutor, the information gathering for the patient. Once you've completed your patient information gathering and you're ready to dispense the medication, you can click on your computer here and that will bring up the dispensing screen. Alternatively, you can click on the little, there's little buttons down here which can bring up the dispense screen, can bring up the prescription, you can bring up the bench top. If you do hold your mouse over it for long enough, a little information tag will come up which will tell you what you can bring up. So we're going to bring up the dispense screen and at the same time you can actually bring up the prescription. The prescription can be moved around. You can make it smaller by clicking on this little thing here. You can make it bigger by putting it there. You can lock it to the screen so that it doesn't disappear. Uh, and then you can work up here. So we're going to enter the patient's name as if we were dispensing the medication. It's important that you do check against the patient's address that they are the correct patient. So as you can see here, we've got this patient already in the system. Uh, their address is 121 UWA Drive. You've got their concession type, which is pensioner. You've got to confirm that the Medicare number is correct, which in this case it is. And we can dispense the medication. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. Now when searching for the drug name, it's important that you use 
the generic name for the search function as this will show all of the medications. Uh, in this case here, we're gonna go with this one. And entering the directions. When typing out the directions, it's important to note that the My Dispense software doesn't have any SIG functionality. So you need to type the shortened version out in full for your label. Okay, if you're heading over to the drug details area, just here, which I will be highlighting for you now, it gives you the information about the drug. So you've got the brand name, which is here, you've got the generic name, you also have the pack size, you have the schedule, and then just under here, where it has the note section, will be any important cautionary and advisory labels, which are recommended by the APF. So we'll just continue through and finish this. So we're going to do one repeat. Quantity is 20. Pharmacist initials is your initials. And if you want to, you can now click on this button here to print the label. There's also a clear screen which will clear all of this and the label manager which we'll get to in a minute. So I'm just going to hide this, minimize this prescription. Up here in this top section, just where my mouse is, you will see the patient's dispensing history. So this patient hasn't had any medications dispensed at the pharmacy, but sometimes this will play an important part in the exercise. So make sure you have a look. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the label. So like I said before, this is the label management. You can confirm that it is all correct by just checking against the script on this screen. And if you did need to contact the doctor for any reason, you can give him a call through clicking on the phone. Now, what you would do is you would head down to the doctor's name and then click continue. From this point here at this screen, the your tutor will become the doctor. So you will have the phone conversation with the doctor and they will give you any information that you need from that. If you then needed to annotate the prescription because the doctor may have wanted to make a change, then you can do so by clicking on the toggle endorsements panel. Uh, if you wanted to say if there was an issue with the strength, um, you can click on that and you can click strength, maybe the doctor wanted it as 250 milligrams. Uh, and you would write. And that would be it. You can then move this down towards the area so that when you are there, you can see that the script is now annotated. So this is important if there is any change to the medication uh, or if there is any need to annotate the prescription, you can do that just by clicking on that little section here. If you don't see the section that you want for the annotation, you can always just click anything and fill out the information and drag it close to whatever section that you want. Just while we're at this screen, I'll take you through another couple of interesting features we also have a references section here where you can gain access to Martindale, the Pharmacy Board of Australia, and the PBS website. Uh, now, not, these ones don't always have enough access for all the students in the class, so it is recommended that you always do have your APF and AMH with you, or access to this at least during the uh, dispensing process. Once you're all dispensed and you're ready to get the medication, you can head over to the shelves here and over on this side you have your regular product shelf, you have a fridge and you have a safe for your S8 prescriptions. So the shelf are all the shelves are all in alphabetical order. You can search for the medication that way you will need to make sure that you have the right medication. So for this case, we are looking for 
the amoxicillin amoxyl 500 milligram caps. So you can pull that up by accessing the label there, which is going to. Once you've picked out the medication and you can see the expiry date, it's important that you record this date in the appropriate place. So we're going to add this to our cart close that product selection we're going to move back to the dispensing screen and you actually have to fill it out in the patient notes section so make sure you've got the correct patient still selected and our expiry for this one is 13th the 10th 2017. Failure to record the expiry date in the patient notes could lead to a zero for the scenario screen and it has my basket. Within the basket you have your medication which is selected, you have your label and you have your cautionary and advisory labels. Now if this medication did require a cautionary advisory label, let's just say for the sake of this exercise we can use a label 2. All you would do would be to click the label and pop it on the medication as easy as that and then that way you know that you've got that caution advisory label on that medication. It's important that you scan the medication to ensure that you've selected the right one. This is the same as what happens in any pharmacy that should be using a barcode scan. So I click on the medication, the label that I've got, I click on the scanner and scan that medication. It will come back and tell me whether the medication that I scanned was correct or whether I've selected the wrong one. Now it's time to stick the label on the box. So you grab that label and pop it on there. It gives you this little section here and you need to pop it on an area where it's not going to obstruct anything important. So for this case I'm going to rotate it and stick it right there. The label's now stuck on the box appropriately. I've scanned it and I can now exit this screen. If the medication you're dispensing is an S8 medication, then you need to record it in the S8 register. You would do so by clicking on the little S8 register on the table and selecting the medication that you need. So the date is obviously the date that you're supplying it. You would need to enter the patient's details as it appears on the script. So for this case here, Right. So let's say in this case, if we're dispensing 20, we're going to do 20 out and then you would need to work out the balance. Remember to use a calculator, even if it's a very simple subtraction, but in pressure situations, you can often make a mistake. There's that one there. Uh, the signature of the person recording this entry is yourself. So you would enter either your name, you could enter the prescriber's name as well, which is John Roebuck. So down here, you would enter the a prescription identifying number or an invoice number, uh, which in the pharmacy would be found on the label. But for our case, you find it on the top of the prescription, the unique prescription number here, 2440. So I'm going to enter that in. And then you just need to click save this entry and it's all done. So once you're happy that you've dispensed the medication correctly and you're ready to counsel the patient, all you need to do is click on the patient and click on hand over. So then you click finish. The next step of this process would be to counsel the patient. So you would go and do role play with your tutor to counsel the patient. And then coming back with your tutor, you would assess and look at how your uh, label, labeling and processes are compared to the best practice, which is also demonstrated on this screen. For assessments, you will need to click on the Submit for Marking button to submit your work for marking. 
Thank you for taking the time to get to know the My Dispense program. If you do have any further questions, they can be answered or asked in the orientation. Otherwise, feel free to shoot your tutor an email.